Greetings, Kingdom Keepers. We've looked at some pretty spectacular animals so far, haven't we? Well, today is a special day because we're going to look at an animal that is so fitting for this week, it's literally in its name. Any guesses? No? Then I'll just tell you. So we're here at the Creation Museum to get you up close and personal with the ironclad beetle. There are lots of different types of beetles, including the rhinoceros beetle, the stag beetle, the dung beetle, and even the ladybug. These awesome animals are a type of insect. Insects are six-legged invertebrates. But what is an invertebrate? Well, invertebrates are animals with no backbone. The opposite of this would be vertebrates. Invertebrates are animals like mammals, reptiles, fish, amphibians, and birds, which all have backbones called a spine. But invertebrates don't have a skeleton inside of them. Instead, they have what's called an exoskeleton. Now, while there are several different types of ironclad beetles, we're going to talk about the diabolical ironclad beetle. Diabolical means evil. Pretty scary name, right? Well, despite its name and its burnt black appearance, this beetle is actually harmless. They mostly eat fungi and lichens. This beetle can be found in the southwestern United States, as well as Mexico. They have a flattened appearance and are only about one inch long. Did you know that the ironclad beetle can survive getting run over by a car? Amazing! Let's dig a little deeper into that. All beetles have a protective covering on their back called an elytra. This covering is made from a hard material called chitin. And in beetles, it typically covers and protects their wings. However, ironclad beetles don't have wings because they're ground beetles. Since they can't fly, they have no way to escape from predators. But God, who's the ultimate artist, has given them nearly impenetrable armor. Since the ironclad beetles don't have wings, their elytra don't need to be able to move. Instead, the two halves of the elytra are fused together, though not like you'd think. Have any of you ever put together a jigsaw puzzle? I have, and they're pretty fun. That's what the ironclad's armor is like. Instead of simply being pressed up against each other, which would be pretty easy for a predator to pry apart. The two parts interlock with a series of protrusions called blades, just like a jigsaw puzzle. This design makes it nearly impossible for the two parts to be pulled apart. And whereas most beetles have a rounded body, the ironclads have a flat body. This allows the pressure to be spread across its entire back rather than being concentrated on a single point. Because of this design, the diabolical ironclad beetle has one of the strongest exoskeletons in the entire animal kingdom. In fact, studies have shown that this beetle can withstand pressures of up to 39,000 times its own weight. 39,000 times. That would be equivalent to me withstanding the weight of 25 blue whales, which are the largest animals to ever live. Amazing. Just like some armored dinosaurs, this beetle could rightly be called a living tank. Their tough armor not only protects the ironclad beetles from predators, but also from being squashed by a rock or a foot. And because they're not getting squashed, they're able to live for a long time. Raise your hand if you're eight years old. No, I'm not eight. That's how long an ironclad beetle can live. Other types of beetles usually only live for one or maybe two years. Have any of you ever been to a desert? They can be very hot, with some deserts reaching temperatures of over 150 degrees Fahrenheit or 65 degrees Celsius. In these dry places, water is often scarce, but that's not a problem for this beetle. Its incredibly thick exoskeleton allows it to retain water and stay hydrated. Because of its incredible strength, some scientists are studying this insect to see if we can replicate the structure of its exoskeletons in order to make stronger buildings, airplanes, and other man-made objects. We certainly can learn a lot from God's creation. Byron here is crawling by to remind us that just like he has been given incredibly strong armor to protect him from his enemies, God gives us protection from our enemies. And who's our enemy? That's right, the devil. In Ephesians, we find that we are to take up the shield of faith, which we can use to extinguish the devil's flaming darts and to put on the helmet 
of salvation. The devil wants us to sin, to disobey God's commands. He tries to get us to lie, have a bad attitude, to talk badly about others, or even to steal. But the shield of faith helps us to deflect the temptations from the devil and to stand firm. And the helmet of salvation helps us discern what is good and what is not. It protects our minds and keeps us from going astray and turning from God's word. All right, everyone, it's time to get out there and learn to discern. Discern.